Laptop Pro. Today I want to show you something, uh, an adjustment to the Rover's own that is pretty unique and um, probably you've never really seen anything quite like it. Um, but it does have a background and I'll explain that to you a little bit later. But right now what I'd like to start with is telling you some of the cautions in using it. First of all, you have to use it sparingly. This is not a, an adjustment. This is really more of a stunt. Uh, and um, you, you can't play it for a long period of time. You have to pick your spots, and I'll explain that to you too. Uh, and to do it, before you do the adjustment and the stunt, or the stunt, uh, you must uh, be very good at playing the zone. You must be willing to play uh, the zone defense. Take strong knowledge of both the zone and of your opponent. You have to know what they do. You have to know it well. And it requires uh, teaching. It requires you to be able to get your players to do what you want them to do. If you can't do that in what you're working with right now, this won't, this won't work either. Uh, so uh, with those things in mind, I'll give you now a little background of how I don't usually like stunts or adjustments like this. I came upon it by happenstance, really, and I'll, I'd like to explain that to you. It was when I was with Orlando. Uh, we had played Miami on a Saturday afternoon game in Miami. And we got hurt very badly by Wade and Shaq, mainly uh, with the use of the middle pick and roll. On the way back, uh, we were due, I should explain, we were going to play them again the very next night. This is an afternoon game on Saturday. We were playing them again at our place on, uh, on Sunday, Sunday night. Uh, on the way back, the head coach uh, called me over and said, listen, let's go up to the office when, when we get back and, uh, and talk about this. And so we did. We, we just, the two of us, went into the office. It was in the evening by that time, by the time we got there. And we began to, first of all, we looked at it on films a lot. And then we started to figure out what we could do. Uh, both very strong players. And um, we finally th thought about that maybe uh, we could stop it with the zone. And with the, with the rover zone. And but my objection to that was that one, once they see us in a zone, then, you know, they're, they're not going to be uh, fooled with anything. They're going to just uh, run their zone offense uh, at us. And we're not, I don't think we can hold up to that uh, over the course of any length of, of time. So we looked at a couple other things, and then we thought, you know, because it was a zone, we drew it up and said, you know, maybe we can play man to man and move into the zone after they have started the middle pick and roll. The advantage to that was that they would maybe recognize then that we were in a zone. They had no much, they don't have, didn't have many choices. They could pull it back out and set up a zone offense, but then they had very little time and that gave us an advantage by playing the zone because they would have to hurry uh, against the zone, which, you know, I, I don't think people can do very, uh, very well. Uh, so we made that decision. We did, tried everything. We showed, you know, we went back and forth and things. We stayed there a long, long time. And the irony of it was that we had no practice time. Uh, so we had to bring the team in early. 
we uh, found out that the, that Miami had not made any uh, any um, request for the zone for the, the arena uh, so that they could you know have a practice uh, and so we we felt that we if we could bring the players in at five o'clock it was a seven o'clock game that would, that's how much time we would have because they would start showing up at about 5 30. so we we had to put it in in a half an hour but the, the second thing was and you know the head coach looked at me and he said you know we're doing something not it never been done before secondly uh, we don't have any time to practice it thirdly this game's on national television and uh, so, but we decided we could do it, and we did it. And we didn't win the game, but we played them very, very strong. They were just had too much manpower for us. So now let me show you what we did and how it could be used uh, for yourselves. I have to go to the, uh, to the uh, stand here to be able to do that. Well, first of all, let me show you uh, the offense. They ran their middle pick and pro roll somewhat like this. Sometimes Shaq would be down uh, either side, but it was pretty obvious uh, when they were going to, uh, to do it. So uh, this would be primarily how we would play them. They had uh, four, a nice shooter, but kind of a short range shooter uh, in this corner. They had a shooter over here. Uh, and of course they lined up a guy here. And uh, so it didn't make any difference where Shaq was coming from. Uh, or he could start there, start right in the middle. Sometimes he would just do that on his own. Just instead of running down there, he'd just turn around and, and set, uh, set it up. So here's what we were playing man to man. Now, you have, this was very important. They were looking at us to defend the pick and roll, probably like we did the, the night before, because they really hadn't practiced. We knew that. So this was Ray, Wade, and this was Shaq. Uh, Wade dribbles, of course, and uses Shaq as a screener. What we did with this, and this you could vary, we decided to go over the top of that screen to, to set this up. Uh, once we went over the top or trailed aggressively so that he really had something to think about, uh, hopefully we hoped that he would move out of the lane because that is the area that the rover would play normally. Okay, so as he went over, as he went off over that outside of that zone that I showed you last time, five then just dropped to that position. He dropped to that position. He dropped to that position. He, we were in a zone except for one man, him. That was easy, very easy. What we did with him is made that player the rover. So as Wade dribbled out of the, his zone, he just went down and was the rover. Uh, and now you have to remember this. We were, now we're in a zone. We didn't care what were, were those guys, were, what they were going to do, how they were going to adjust, because we now were in the zone. All we did was set up in a man, play man, and at the, at the uh, right time, we filtered right into the zone. It was very easy. Guy stepped in, guy stepped out, guy stepped in, guy... It was just normal. That's why you have to be able to play the zone well, because you're now in zone, and you're going to stay in zone. If they pull it out and set their zone offense up, you have to be able to, you still have to be able to play uh, a good zone. Seemed, seemed simple, but it was very effective. As I told you, we, 
we felt that you know, they didn't set this up real quick because this was Shaq and he didn't come down the floor real fast. So, you know, they were probably taking eight to ten seconds just to get it set. Maybe not quite that much. But now, as they dribbled off and they looked, and there we were in a zone, our rover zone. And now they had to make a decision. Are we just going to keep playing or are we going to set up? Well, what was happening is a coach jumps up and yells zone. And so they went into their zone offense. But now they might have as little as eight seconds. Now that is an advantage to the zone defense. Uh, the result of this, they quit using the middle pick and roll. Now, uh, that's what we wanted. Because we, we could play pretty well with them when we could get away from that one place. Wade was, this is a young Wade, and he was so uh, strong as an individual player, more so than, than Shaq. Uh, we could have done some things with Shaq, but we couldn't do much with, with uh, Wade. So that's what happened. We did not have to worry about the pick and roll the rest of the night. They did this about, we zoned them maybe about four or five times, and that's all. But we changed the game, uh, and that's what we, uh, that's what we went, uh, went in trying to do. Now, you can use this same, same premise on other plays, and that's what happened with us. We played really well against Miami, as good as we could play. Kept the game close all the way. They had to work very hard to win, win the game. The next game we were to play was in, uh, uh, well, actually it was against the Knicks. And this was Mary Berry, and I don't remember who their five minutes. It was the same setup. So we used it again the next night. We, we beat the Knicks by about 20 in our place. The following night, though, because this was easy for us to do again, the following night, it was a back-to-back, -back, we were playing New Jersey. Well, we, we pondered this, how we could do this. And what the biggest threat that New Jersey had was running uh, Jason Kidd off of that back pick and posting him up. Uh, and then they had a lot of options. They could come out and set a screen or sometimes they exchanged whatever. Uh, but when we recognized this play, we decided uh, what we were going to do something. We were gonna, going to uh, run our adjustment against it. Well, we had a two guard front, two wingmen, and a high post man. Uh, and so, our key was here, by the way, going back to this, we did have a one word uh, 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 signal when we went into it. So we told our players, somebody call out train. When you hear train, I don't know how we came up with that word, train, then we know we're in it. I didn't want them to go into the game having some in zone, some in man to man. Train was her signal, everybody was in the zone. We did the same thing here. But it was this play that we decided we best stop. Because he hurt us, because he's such a terrific passer. Uh, so when this pass was made, uh, the man guarding the guard on the side of the pass, could have been either side, became the rover. Immediately, we yelled, train, this guy now was a wingman in the zone. This guy, the guarding five, went into this position. This guard here, this guard here, and we were now in the zone. He was guarding the ball. We had the, ro we had the uh, rover where he was supposed to be. We had the five man defensively there, the four man here. Now we were concerned about this 
uh, but it never really hurt us. Um, and we went on to a big victory because New York, Jersey had a good team. And uh, we beat them at their place by, it was pretty easy, about 20, uh, 20 points. Uh, and so it, the adjustment was very easy to do. Um, how fast your players could catch on to it, we caught on to it in the 15 minute um, walkthrough uh, for this game. And then the following game, we had the same set up uh, when, uh, with Marbury and, and uh, a, a big, I can't remember who was it, who that player was. Uh, but these people gave us trouble and uh, with their Princeton type offense. I never saw Princeton run like that, but uh, they, that's what they call it. Uh, and this took them right out of it, took, them, took that play right out of it. And they stopped using it and then they couldn't figure out whether we were in a zone or manned, they felt that we were going to go zone all the time. Well, the next time they got the ball, we were in man again. Uh, and so we only did this on one play. Well, you know, I know this adjustment, uh, it, was got, it was towards the end of the season. It was a lot of tightness about the playoffs and stuff. I know this won us two or three games. Uh, helped us with Miami. We won, though, outright two or three games. The problem is, and this is uh, the, my, la uh, my ending cautions uh, to you, uh, and why I said you have to know your opponents really well. We had some rules about it. The first thing, we had to identify their five or four most important plays the plays that we knew they had to run to win. Secondly, we had to pick out of those five plays the one or two, we did use it for two plays one time, one play that is fit. We couldn't just say, well, this is our strongest play, we're going to use it on our strongest, because the strongest play may not fit what we were doing. It may have been too difficult to make the adjustment. So we had to go down to their number two play or their number three play, but we picked one play. Now the advantage to that is that um, the opponent isn't going to know. They may have, I don't know if they ever really figured out what we were doing, but if they did, then they had to try to decide, well, what play do you think they would do? We picked the play that we were going to use it. They had no knowledge until the game what uh, play that we would use it on. So, um, so you have to, I just had to check my notes to make sure I didn't uh, forget, uh, forget anything. Um, that the main thing I want you to know is you've got to know those plays and you've got to pick the right, right uh, play. Uh, again, please don't, you know, the last time I showed this, everybody went out and tried to do it without knowing how to play a zone and play the zone. And then, you know, that, that doesn't work. Take your time. Learn the zone first. Uh, and I don't want you to play zone that much, but uh, but you can get pretty good at that with without a, because it's a simple, very simple uh, defense. Uh, and when you're comfortable with your players being able to play zone, play the zone, uh, then you might consider this. But remember this: you got to take their best plays. Don't waste this on a nothing play. That you don't need this for a nothing play. You you only would use it against a real good play, and then it has to lend itself to uh, to that uh, that adjustment. Some of them don't. Well, that's it for today. Uh, hope it works for you. Uh, if we can help you, let us know, and we'll see you next time.